What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at the freshly dropped demo of Subterrain Minds of Titan. The sequel to the original Subterrain, which is a game that I actually really, really liked, but never got around to completing. Uh, in this game, as far as I understand it, I'm pretty much blind here. Uh, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants with today's episode, but as far as I understand it, this takes place in space, and there's kind of like these stations on a mine, in, like on a moon, basically. And the stations are all interconnected, and there's kind of like an under rail tiled thing going on underneath them where there's monsters and baddies, and it's an RPG and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, that's got me intrigued. And so I've been waiting for a really, really long time for this demo to show up. Uh, if after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. But that spiel on out of the way. Let's dive on in. Let's see what the game's got on offer. Let's see if this demo is promising and if there's anything cool going on with it, shall we? You drift aimlessly through the dark expanse. You cannot feel nor hear. The movement that you appear to be seeing in the distance is distinct and subtle. Every moment feels circular, leading back to the last. Your thoughts are disjointed and separated. You attempt to recollect how you got here, and you have an epiphany. You've had an epiphany about this exact thought in the past. You discover the concept of sound once again as an overpowering whirring enters your ears. A jolt and then a pulse, and you begin to feel the beat in your core. The face you've forgotten everything about regains sensation and something forcibly detaches from your face. You begin to regain your vision. You somehow manage to utter a word. Where? The metal around you reverberates and the machine hisses and ejects vapor as the container opens. The air feels warm to your skin as it floods into your vessel. A woman looks on with concern. Hey, are, are you alive? Where? You're in Campy Hu- Wait, Campy Huggins? I don't know, Titan, of course. Hopefully that's not a surprise. This is our clinic, and you, my friend, have just been awoken from stasis. I know this is sudden, and you've probably got some questions, but can you try moving around? We need to do neural diagnostics and then get you connected for some biometrics. Okay, yeah, I can waltz around the room. You try to move, but your limbs feel unresponsive and weak. You try again in earnest, though you probably shouldn't have. You hardly twitch your arm. The pain washes over you. Not really, it hurt. The pain sweeps in, the tide ever rising, overwhelming your sense of self. You catch a glimpse of the woman mouth agape as she backs away and frantically panics, her eyes darting around the room. The sound of her footsteps sound like they're echoing into the distance that you cannot see. Isco, get over here! The beat of someone's footsteps overlaps with the ones in your core shortly before ceasing. Your vision is instantly robbed of you. You feel your back and your shoulders sink past the confines of your body and you begin to drift. The feeling is oddly familiar. You have an epiphany. You've had an epiphany before. The pain evaporates. You quietly tumble into darkness and leave yourself behind. Voices call out. Urgent, chaotic, and they roll across the horizon, brushing against what passes for consciousness. After eons, they calm, their song losing tempo. The pulse in your body weakly rises on its own, your core jostling just sightly with every heartbeat. Well, that was too damn close. Can you hear me? Can you move now? The pain has subsided. You're lucid, but your body feels weak. You try to move and fail to accomplish much, but it doesn't hurt like before. Not really. I'm weak, but I'm not in pain. Excellent. The lack of pain, I mean. Listen, I know you probably have questions of your own, but we're grasping at straws here. Do you remember why you were in stasis? Anything at all? We don't understand what happened here. I, my name is Addison Thorpe. What do you mean, we don't understand? Hello, Addison. I'm Dr. Shoshani, although everybody calls me Ida. You were put in stasis improperly, which doesn't make a lot of sense, unless it was some kind of emergency. Uh, we came across your pod, but it doesn't have any markings. No logs, no metadata. We don't know when you went cold or if you were involved with the TECC. And there's nobody left to ask. What do you mean? Are you two not with the TECC? There's no sugarcoating it, Isco. Myself and many others are part of Tech's second mining operation. Your team disappeared seven years ago. We don't really know... She continues to speak, but you can't help but panic, trying to remember events that just aren't there to recall. You reel your mind, relaying your days leading up to joining Tech and preparing for the journey to Titan. You blurt out the only thing you can clearly recant in the middle of Ida's explanation. 
I remember working at a steam well. Ida's frustration is palpable. She clears her throat and resumes. As I first surmised, it seems, you didn't get out of this scatheless. They didn't cool you down properly before putting you on ice, so there's no telling what may have happened to your mind or everything else in your body for that matter. We can only hope that you regain your memory at this point. On that note, we may as well focus on solvable problems. Even if you can't remember much right now, we need your help. We're hardly managing here, and there's only a few dozen of us. Please, tell me you remember what an Omniscope is, or we're going to be here for a while. We're going to have to get yours back online. Uh, I did have one. How did you know? They sort of just tossed you in the pod, and as durable as they are, it looks like the SOC on yours didn't appreciate coming along for the ride. It lit on fire when we turned it on. We gotta fix it and link you back up. You can fix that? Well, replace is the better word for it, but your lenses are fine, thankfully. Uh, so we're just gonna sink you to a new unit. A new unit. It's kind of old, but it's the only working spare that we've got. You know how to use it, right? Or did that get iced out, too? I think I can remember the basics, yeah. The Omniscope, a multifunction embedded information device. The device is two parts. Wireless lenses that are inserted, or they're inserted into the eyes by a surgery. Ow, that sounds painful. And remotely linked to an AI unit. It can be used to communicate, read maps, or analyze objects. All right, let's get this over with. Isco, you finished wiping that spare controller? Yep, here you go. Isco hands the controller unit over to Ida. She hardly inspects the transmitter's wafer, keeping her attention focused on you. All right, you ready to start? Second thought? Don't answer that. You're a sitting duck without this, and I'd hate for you to rise from your grave just to jump back into it permanently. Here, hold still, and we're going to begin. You relax on the table, expecting to be put under, but instead, Ida palms the back of your head. You feel your skull produce a thin object, as though it was ejecting from your skin. Another one is threaded into the previous resident's burrow and takes its place. Your vision is augmented. The scope begins to display information in your natural vision through text and appears soft. The text in your field of view noticeably shudders for a moment, then becomes legible. Omniscope ID 24601 starting boot sequence. I'm Cassini, AI assistance of Omniscope ID 24601. The Omniscope boot sequence is successful. Detected damage memory area. Please wait a moment while I attempt to recover. The images of the AI on screen soon disappear and Ida talks to confirm that the device is still active. How is it? These things are backwards compatible, so I'm guessing it's been a while since you had a lens update. Should be fine though, we popped out your old transmitter since its pair won't be coming up anytime soon. It was fuzzy for a second, but it looks like it's working. Great, cause there isn't another one. Don't go getting frozen again, alright? Wait, where'd you get this one from? Ah, uh, don't worry about it. Isco wiped it and ran some tests on it. We cleaned the transmitter, r transmitter really, really well. Only a couple hundred hours of use on this one, so it's practically new. Okay, so it looks like you're feeling better. Want to give moving a try again? It'd be nice if we could get some clothes on you. No offense, but behind the screen next to the sinks, there's a box with a spare change of clothes. Please, help yourself. Okay, where's my box at? Hi, I'm Cassini, the AI that controls Omniscope. Beginning guidance for Omniscope devices. A gauge for your HP. Okay, we've got a bunch of conditions over here. Hunger and thirst, it looks like. And then over here on this side, it's got our information about our oxygen, what day it is, and then our location. And so it looks like the oxygen content has to be more than 70% for it to function properly. I think in real life, the actual mixture is like 20%, but I don't know. The minimap displays your immediate surroundings, including points of interest. You can check out the various functions of Omniscope, like perks and stats, through this button. And then there's a gauge with our adrenaline level. Okay, we can also register items right there, so those are quick slots. And then our equipment goes over on that side. Displays information about your portable oxygen. You can see the remainder of your oxygen in your equipped canister. Okay, there is lamp battery. It looks like there is your weapon. It looks like there is equipment over here. And apparently we can skip turns. So this one's turn-based. I don't remember. I feel like the first game was the first game turn-based. I feel like the first game wasn't. So maybe they kind of went roguelike-y with it. All right. Oh, yeah, dude. We can walk around. Okay. They said there's a box of clothes over here somewhere. So let's look around. Uh, it looks like we've got a broken monitor. I'll throw that in my inventory real quick. It looks like we've got some rusty utensils. I guess we'll throw those in there, too, because, like... I'm a loot hound, I can't help it. Medkit, probably kind of useful. Looks like it gives us 2.5 health regen for 10 turns. Sounds good. What's on this over here? It looks like we have a lotion bottle. So it's totally demolished. Looks like we can recycle it, though. 
And then over here we've got a robot vacuum. Oh no, dude, it's a destroyed Roomba. I, I kind of get it. I had a Roomba and it totally sucked. Uh, we've got clothing right there. Does it give us any type of stats or anything? It looks like it gives us protection plus three, so it does indeed. Oh, I didn't, I didn't get to loot the whole room. Hold on, I want my looties, man. I want my goodies. Uh, there, much better, don't you think? I bet you're famished after all this. I mean, you were dead and died and currently now not dead, so you should probably have something anyway. Soup, bread, anything, really. This Omniscope should point you in the right direction of the pub. Go find Alp Huge Mustachio Guy. Or Alp, the Huge Mustachio Guy. He loves meeting people and has run out of those a week ago. All right. Hold on, I'm going to finish looting. I'm going to get another lotion bottle, which thankfully stacks. Uh, what else do we have going on? Anything? Is there a context key I can hold down? Like a tab? Oh, there's a radio menu. Okay, fair enough. Doesn't look like there's a Baldur's Gate style key that I can hold down, though, to make all of the lootables highlight. So I guess we will follow the Omniscope and go where we're supposed to go. So it looks like it wants us to go to this little star room over here. Is there more stuff to loot? Ooh, there is. Nice. Can I, like, shift-click that stuff over? I can. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm just going to loot, like, the entire world before we move on because I'm greedy and I want all the things. So I'm going to take them. Oh, the star is us. Gotcha. Okay, I thought the star was maybe our objective. Uh, so where are we trying to go here? It said the Omni would guide us over there. Okay, so I could open up tracking inside of the quest log over here on the J key. And so it should be lit up now and telling us kind of where to go. I guess not. Most of it seems like it's been blurred out by fog of war. So I guess we'll just have to deal with it. Let's start popping doors open and just kind of see where we end up. All right, so it looks like we've got some kind of like crafting room inside of here. And this looks like the place where Isco hangs out. I don't know if I want to loot all this stuff just yet, but it looks like the base has seen better times. It's looking a tiny bit rusty and dusty around here. All right, let's go back out to the hallway, and we'll just start knocking on doors, basically, and trying to find who we're trying to find. Uh, it looks like we've got a separate room inside of here. Stairwell going up and a stairwell going down. Also a door going up. But this looks like personal quarters of some kind. Maybe, oh, no, this looks like a medical area. Never mind. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go down, I guess. Oh, there's actually like a little thing to follow on our feet. It's going like, going. Okay, I see it now. I didn't even notice that before, but it was kind of dark in the previous room, so I guess I'll just follow it, and we'll find this guy. Pixel art's looking pretty good, though. Like, I actually really, really like the area set up. Like, it's got a very, very good look to it. I think this is our guy. Hey, do my eyes deceive me or the guy from the pod they've been trying to wake up? Sorry, my manners, they've left me. Uh, welcome, my new friend of the pub of Camp Huggins. My name is Alp and this is my humble pub. Your stomach growls audibly. Well, you've met my stomach. I'm Addison. Ida said that I should get something to eat from over here. Ah, my manners, pardon me. We don't have much, but I can get you something that was left over. Alp flits about the shelves, pulling out a small container, and from it he produces a bit of bread and a bottle. You can have this. It's not much, but it's going to keep hunger at bay, and somebody paid for it earlier. Alp hands you the bread and the water bottle. I hope you uh, don't mind, but my curiosity, I just can't contain it. I heard your pod was founded in another camp. Is that true? Where are you from? Um, I don't remember much. I just said that they didn't put me into stasis properly, and I worked at a steam well, but that's I don't remember much at all. Really? Steam well? A lot of those still running. I thought they were automated. What about other people? I know so little aside from what we found left outside, or left behind, but we were told that they were smart and talented. Somehow, truly, not one person remains, beside you, that is. Don't worry, I don't think you could hide here for weeks and survive unnoticed. I trust you. Thanks. Tech made it sound like this would be a rescue mission seven years later. Seems silly, but how could we know there would be no trace? Sorry, I wish I could give you some insight. What irony. We woke you up to learn, but instead we have to teach. My frustrations aren't because of you. Uh, we're, we're, you're waking up to a very poor situation, to put it lightly. What's going on? Something happened to the resettlement mission. Our camp is one of many, and the plan for the group heading to the Central One headquarters was supposed to establish contact and connect all the camps. It's been weeks. The only spaceport on Titan is there, and without it, we have no chance of getting back home. They've disappeared, too. 
Was there a backup plan if the spaceport was damaged or inoperable? No idea. We've survived this long, but we've come in contact with other mining camps. But they're all in the same shape we are. If there was a backup plan, only the main group knew about it. We're running low on supplies, and while we all have our own problems, if we don't improve things soon, none of us are going to make it. I should get back to work, but you should probably get some rest after all this. Go found Lau. He's the administrator, so you can rent a room. I don't know how life was before, but some people, even as we slowly fall apart, are still here only to make money. Okay, well, I guess I will take a look at my inventory. And we've got some bready boys right there. Go ahead and eat it. That appears to have done some good. And then this is a water canister. I guess I'll drink it. There we go. What good is that stuff if you're... Oh, it's got multiple charges. Okay. So the game's actually got some things going on that are sort of similar to Stone... Or, yeah, that are sort of similar to Stone Shard, I guess. I'm going to find this administrator. And once I find him, I'm going to give you a synopsis of what he said. And then we're going to try to, like, get to some actual gameplay. This is taking a bit too long. Alright, so after a little bit of moving around, they've given me a room and they've given me board inside the base, but they've all decided that I need to help out. And so I've been given our first quest, and it's going to be a mind-boggling display. Uh, I have to go kill some rats that are in the stock room. That's literally the first quest of this RPG. So I don't know exactly where the rats are in the stock room, but I'm going to seek them out so that I can earn my way as a productive member of whatever this society is that we're running right now on Titan. Rats, are you around here? Nope, that's just another bed. There's no rats back here, so we're in the kitchen. I gotta figure out exactly where these rats are at. Okay, I didn't see this stairwell back here. There's a basement stairwell. I have equipped myself well with the, the tools of a true adventurer, a mop. So we're gonna see how it goes. He gave me the key to this door, I think. Yeah, there it is. Uh, can I open these? Oh, I can smack those. Nice little attack animation right there. I don't hate it. Okay. Bunch of stuff just dropped on the ground. There's no, like, confirmation sound effect or anything when I pick it up. But I'll take it. It looks like we got another bread. All right, dude. I love bread. Bread is one of my most favoritest things. I'm gonna eat it up right now. There we go. I'm gonna eat my bread. I'm gonna drink my water. And then I'm gonna go in peace until I see a rat. And then I'm gonna beat it. Uh, let's see here. Is something bad happening? I feel like something bad is happening. Did I just lose health? What did I lose health for? I'm confused. I need an adult. Was the bread that I ate like bad or something? Is that what happened? I don't know. Let's go. Oh, there's a rat right there. Let's go get him. Bah! Hey, 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 hey. Calm down, ratty. Calm down. Okay, the rats hit for a lot of damage. That's. I have terrible accuracy. I think the first rat was defeated, but I do like that little slight zoom-in slowdown effect you get when you kill an enemy. That's really, really nice. I don't really want to destroy his stock room, but I'm going to anyways because it gave me... It gave me free stuff, and apparently I'm leveling up my proficiencies right now, too. So why not take the little bit of practice that we're going to get? There we go. Break those up. I didn't realize we could level up off crates. We're starting to learn the heft the heft of the mop in our hand that we might become the great cleaning janitorial warrior. Ow! There's another rat. He bit me. Upsetting. Uh, apparently I got a physical proficiency, so that's good. And it looks like the rat is dead now. That's definitely not all of them, though. Did I just pick up a bunch of rat parts? Is that what I'm, like, looting off the ground right now? Oh, it is. Yeah, I've got the tail of a rat. I wonder if there's other weapons that are, like, slightly better. So I've got a rusty kitchen knife. I don't know how that compares to the mop. They're worth about the same amount of money, so I would assume it probably squares up in a very, very similar light. It says that this one does 10 to 18 damage, and then it does injury damage. So it does, like, 17 to 33 this one looks like it does, like, 10 to 37. Okay, that's fine by me. I don't know how I heal myself. I have questions. I might need some band-aids. While I was walking around town, there was an assortment of things for us to interact with. There was, like, vendors, and there were other people willing to give me quests so that I could go on out and take care of those things, like, for the colony. It also looked like there was a crafting area with, like, crafting benches and stuff for all the garbage we've been picking up. There we go. Get him with that. Get him with that big damage, bro. There you go. That's the good stuff. 21 right there. Yup, yup. Ow. Stop that. 
I assume, like, it looks like our damage is going up, and we're getting much, much better at fighting very, very quickly. Apparently, I'm super tired right now. I'm not feeling so great. We can attack on diagonals, so that's probably a good piece of information to be aware of, and apparently we've earned our first level up through honorable rodent combat. Rodent combat! Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna loot all this stuff, and then, uh... Oh, why is my health going down? Do I have, like, some serious bleed malady that I'm not aware of? It says the air is breathable in here, but I don't know why I'm losing health. Why am I losing health? Uh, I'm tired, maybe? Hmm, I'm still losing health up here. That's kind of unfortunate. Can you, like, rest a turn or something? It doesn't look like I can rest a turn, so I'm pretty sure I'm about to die. I have no idea where my health is going. Let me see if I can find a character sheet or something that may enlighten me. Apparently, my health regen is going down because I am exhausted. That is the answer to the question of the thing that is happening right now. So, apparently, once you get tired, you start to lose health as though you're bleeding. Okay. Fair enough. I have a med kit in my backpack. Can I use that? There we go. Use the med kit. I mean, that's only going to buy me like 10 turns. How do I get rid of tiredness? You will literally work yourself to death soon. I don't know how to get rid of tiredness, though. I completed your quest. I got beat up by rats, but I beat your quest. Hey, can I help you? Um, you yeah, got rid of them. You weren't kidding. There was a lot. Yeah, that was quick. All right, I'll take care of the rest. Here's some money for your trouble, and uh, I'm sure you could use a pick-me-up after that. He gives you some food, drink, and credits. It ain't much, but if I bring credit, I can buy my own food and water, and if you're hurt somewhere, you should visit Isco. He's got medical supplies. I have something a little bit more difficult if you're interested. It'll pay more since there's something to recover this time. I'll take what I can get. Uh, there's a cave to the northwest that a few people have gone into. One of the samples they brought back was a mushroom that after testing and sampling, we found out is nutritious and tasty. Okay. You want to eat mushrooms, right? That's great. I'll be waiting for you, so hurry up and go. I'm looking forward to it. I think I can already smell the mushroom baking mushrooms. Oh, and this will help you dig up the mushrooms. Apparently, I got a makeshift reaper. All right, sounds good. So it looks like the tiredness actually diminishes over time. So I think it's just repeated attacks over and over and over again do that to you. So you overexert yourself. It kind of crept up. Uh, it kind of crept up on me because I wasn't aware of the system that existed inside the combat. But I would like to see if maybe I can find my way back to like the sleeping quarters and maybe rest it off for a little while. They gave me a key to my own room inside of here if I promise to do work for the colony. And apparently, what has happened is here's the story as I heard it from Lao. Uh, there is a main base. There are many other bases. They haven't heard anything from the main base in a long time, and all of the out bases now are falling apart, and they're not quite sure what to do. So that's why this place has basically become somewhat self-sufficient. They have their own hydroponics, they're growing their own food, they're doing their own thing, uh, but we need to figure that out. Now, this place has kind of fallen into, like, space super capitalism, uh, so they've developed their own currency and, like, their own money, and you only get paid according to, like, the work you do and whatnot. And so anyways, when we met the overseer, he wanted to charge us for the bed, but since we just got out of an isolation pod, we didn't really have the stuff for that. Uh, but anyways, it looks like we get to pick a perk here because we leveled up. I will pick a perk. Uh, it looks like we can get adrenaline. Generate adrenaline when you attack, or maybe we already have that, possibly. I don't know if we already have that. Over here, though, it looks like we can get two-handed mastery. Can we? Are these locked? We have two perk points. Oh, we gotta unlock it. Okay, let's get stunning strike. Yeah, we're gonna be like a hammer user. And then we'll get like, let's see here, immediately prepare your body for a fight with a quick dose of adrenaline as well as briefly improving your attacks. Okay, yeah, let's get that too. That sounds good. And I assume that these just kind of like drag and drop on in. Oh, nice, dude. We got abilities now. I actually kind of wanted to investigate the crafting system. But let me look around for a second and see if I can find that kind of stuff. Okay, so as far as I can tell, I figured out how to recycle stuff. It took me a little bit, though. I had to look at it. He said he's too busy. Okay. I had to look at it for a minute and try to, like, figure out how to do it. But if you go into this little right area over here, it's like a workshop or something. And then if you put your stuff inside of here, 
you can actually recycle it. And then, once you've got base components, you can craft other things that don't, like, suck quite as hard. Hopefully, anyways, would be the idea. I want my cockroach yokin back. I don't know what yokin is, but I want it. I want my cockroach yogurt back. You give that back to me in the post-apocalypse, a man's cockroach yogurt is the most important thing he can have. I also want my knife back. Okay, so now that that's in there, you can press the N key and it takes you to the recycling menu. And then it looks like we can queue up tasks here in order to recycle things. Now, the processing doesn't seem to be working now that I'm looking at it. So I don't know if I've actually unlocked it yet. It just says everything is queued up. But at least I figured out how to get everything into the queue. However, from what I can tell, it's also costing me a processing fee because this is my money right here. And so I'm pretty sure my money has been going down as I add things to, like, the queue. Yeah, indeed it has. And so anyways, I don't know when they start on the queue, but as far as I can tell for right now, they haven't started on it yet. So we may not be at, like, the part of the storyline where that actually, like, works. Oh, I can only use that with a blunt weapon, right? Okay. Well, we'll kind of, we'll keep our mop in its spot for right now. And they said that to a cave to the northwest, there was going to be a whole bunch of mushrooms. So let's go check out the mushroom situation, I guess. Hopefully it's not anything too gnarly. But we'll go see if we can harvest some mushrooms. I mean, I, I doubt that there are many things that will ingratiate us to, like, the local community. Like... You know, bringing back dinner, basically. Like, people seem to enjoy that kind of stuff. I mean, the bad news is there's a whole bunch of blood in front of the cave. Unless that's just, like, reddish shading on top of the sand. That could also be a possibility. It is very dark, so you can barely see things that are close by. Wait, what just happened? Why did that just all skip? Oh, no. I feel like I've missed out on an important piece of information. Oh, no. I don't know why that entire section of text just, like, zoomed straight through. It is, after all, an alpha tech demo. But now I'm afraid. I am afraid and I'm worried for my life. It's dark and scary in here, but I can see the lights. So I'll just kind of, like, follow. Are those mushrooms? Oh, what is that thing? It's like a giant worm thing. I think I killed it. I think I gushed it. I don't know what it is, but it's been reduced down to a fine paste. I am the cave warrior. Look upon me in despair. Ye beings of non-cave origin. Well, why would you... Like, I guess I'm the cave being destroyer. So, like, the only things that would look upon me in despair are, like, things that live in caves, I guess. Okay. That entire monologue is a wash. This is what I get for not being a consummate professional right here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, no. Smush him. He smushed. Okay. He's been smushed. We smushinated him. He's been smushitized. So, like, what do these mushrooms look like that I... Oh, no, another one. Hit him! Oh, we missed! There we go, 14 damage. There we go, 17 damage. And there we go. All right, all right, all right, he's dead. He's dead. Uh, how much durability do I have left on Comrade Clunk? That's what I'm calling my shabby mop right now. It's Comrade Clunk. I think I saw a bitter piece of him. I have some meat in my inventory. Maybe Alp can make use of it. It looks a little unappetizing, if I'm being honest with you. It doesn't look like it's in the best of condition. Like, there are a lot of things I'll shove in my mouth, but, like, random vermin meat that I found in a cave next to a town that's made out of rust that's in the process of, like, starving to death. Okay. Okay. Was I successful at all? I think it was saying fail. I thought it said fall at first, but I was like, no, no, I don't need any information about what season it is. Okay, we've got our cave mushrooms. There they are. We've got our... There we go. There we go. There we got some cave mushrooms. All right. Apparently, picking cave mushrooms is desperate business. That's what I'm learning here. It's very, very, bi it's very, very easy business to fail, okay? As a mushroom plucker, I have performed better in the past. I guess we have nothing else to do except for just, like, head back on- Ow! Dude. Stop it. Cool. 
stunning attack work. It went off. So anyways, I'm actually fairly happy with the animations right here. And I'm actually not, I don't mind the fact that it's being presented in kind of turn-based roguelike fashion with like a square grid that you move around on. I think the movement could be like a tiny bit faster for when you're traversing around town. But other than that, the combat animations and everything seem to look pretty good and the sound effects and the music are well appointed. And so anyways, for like a tech demo, I feel like it's got promise. Especially especially if you're naturally just into roguelikes and things tangential to roguelikes like Stone Shard. It almost seems to me like a little bit of like a sci-fi Stone Shard. That's what I would call it if I was describing it to somebody else. It's got lots of dialogue. It seems to be very, very well written. I haven't seen any problems with really like the prose or like the wording or like typos or anything else. Like thus far, it's been pretty enjoyable if somewhat a little bit aimless and not exactly knowing what I'm supposed to be doing next. Uh, I got your... Wait, how many mushrooms did he want? He wanted 10 of them? Aw, oh, dude. Okay, back to the cave. Back to the cave! Okay, I got the remainder of the mushrooms. I came all the way back to do this because if we're going to do a job, let's make sure that we do it well. Okay, we're going to perform. We're the new guy here, right? We're the new guy. We're the new fish. Like, we've got, we've got to figure out a way to make people like us, all right? Because at the moment, when it comes down to it, this place is kind of falling apart. Uh, when they start deciding whose rations get cut, I can virtually assure you it's not going to be any of the people that have been here for a long time. It's going to be us, the poor bastard that just got let out of an ice pod. I promise you. Because nobody has an attachment to us yet. And so A, we need to make people like us, and then B, we need to find love. That's the second step to this RPG. Alright, so I got the mushrooms, man. Ah, I've looked forward to this. I hope it wasn't too difficult. Here's your money and a bonus. Have this now compared to what I'll be making later. He gives you some food and some credits. Got anything else? Uh, no, nah, you pretty much hit my backlog. I think Litzy was complaining about being shorthanded earlier. Might be worth a trip over to the power generator to see if she has any work. A power generator? It's the building to the northwest of the hub with the funnel on it. All our power. She's normally... Uh, on B2, use your Omniscope if you get lost. Yeah, the, the thing with that is sometimes the Omniscope can't find people. You may have noticed that there were cuts in this video. It's because sometimes I said track this objective, like find this person, and the game was just like, meh, can't do that. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll find them manually. And they weren't even in like a secret place. They were like in the building where we woke up, like down some stairs off to the left. Like it definitely could have guided us there. If it if it gave us the guide treatment to Alp, it could have given us the guide treatment to that other guy in the basement too, but it didn't. Uh, but anyways, that got cut with all the edits while I was looking around for him because I didn't want to use up all of our screen time looking for characters. I wanted to get to the combat. I wanted to wield an axe or like stab something with a shiv-like piece of metal. I want to see the crafting system though. Like, someone on the Steam forum says that the crafting opens up later. And so, like, maybe we're just not there yet. I can tell you this. Nobody is working on our stuff right now. So I'm guessing at some point we're going to get to a quest or something that unlocks the, the breakdown of objects. And then once the objects start to break down, there is a crafting menu over here where you can make, like, new clothing. And, like, things that you found, you can make first aid kits. So a first aid kit is going to cost you some tissue extracts and then some blood extracts and then like you can make new weapons like kitchen knives and mops and things of that nature and so anyways there is a crafting system on in here i think i just have to get far enough into the game to where people start working on breaking down my stuff because it doesn't seem to be happening at the moment it just kind of seems to be queued up i do like the fiddly inventory too like there's a lot of different objects in this game. For, like, a game that's about breaking down things, what a lot of games do is they're just like, eh, scrap circuitry, eh, scrap metal, eh, scrap plastics. Like, this game, you actually pick up, like, old microscopes and broken battery packs and, like, look at all these different individual items that I've picked up just inside of our base that you can break down, and they all give you different stuff. Like, I like that, and they've all got their own graphic, too. If you put them inside your inventory, they've got their own pixel art and everything. Like, there's a lot of little details in here, so, like, I'm actually kind of stoked about this. Like, from where I'm sitting right now, it looks like the game's got, like, a good soundtrack. Everything sounds good. It's got sound effects that are punchy and clunky, and everything sounds nice. I really, really enjoyed the little combat animations and whatnot, and, in fact, the enemies had full, like, fatality 
animations as well when you're killing them. Like, the demo seems to be fairly well put together. Like, because they cut you loose a little bit, so, like, they allow you to not follow, like, any quest or anything, like, straight from the beginning, I think it's going to be really, really easy to kind of, like, wander off and sort of, like, lose track of where you are. So I had to spend a bunch of time. Like, I played for over an hour. I know this video is going to come out to be, like, 30 minutes or so, but I played for over an hour for this video right here. And it was pretty much just all me wandering around, like, figuring out where all the stuff was in the base and learning where everybody lives at, uh, figuring out where all the quests and things are at and how everything works. And so anyways, like, I've actually really, really been digging this. Like, the fact that they've got, like, ten different soap bottle graphics that you can recycle just because is actually kind of a cool eye to detail. Like, I, I think that that's really, really awesome. And so anyways, Subterrain, Mines of Titan. I'm pretty stoked about this, actually, now. I can't wait to see what they do with it. Like, there's a, basically the way I'm going to describe it to people from now on is, like, it's Stone Shard in space. It is quite literally, like, do you like Stone Shard? Do you wish that Stone Shard was not medieval? Do you wish that Stone Shard was in space and you could beat people to death with a broom while you're wearing a spacesuit? Okay, well, there you go, because, like, the game definitely has sort of a turn-based roguelike feeling to it. I mean, they've got a bunch of skills inside of here that you can already play around with. I honestly want to get much, much further on into this demo, but, like, uh, we've got stats, we've got all kinds of goodies up in here. I mean, it's cool. Like, our character looks a little bit like Michael Jackson, but I feel like I can deal with it, like I can deal with it, you know? But anyways, it's time for me to go. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Subterrain, Mines of Titan. Tomorrow we will have something else. Go check the demo out. Play it for yourself. Let me know what you think. See you later, everybody.